Yeah, share from all things industry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. One of the most common questions I've been getting recently from my students and the people around the world, why is my gutta percha not going all the way to length? After I've cleaned and shaped and irrigated and disinfected and everything else, my gutta percha is short. How do you feel, Chuck? I went from happy to angry. Skip said, now I feel like kicking his ass. Then well, let me give you four tips that have helped me over the years. A couple were given to me and most of them I just figured out by just pure pain. I'm not laughing at it. All right, tip number one. Let's go ahead and cone fit. So I'm trying in my cone with some sodium epichlorate. And as I pull the cone out and measure it, it is a bit short. Like, oh gosh, here we go again. So what you can do is you can run your file back to length and we're gonna run it right to a working length and let's take a look at the apical parts of the flute and sure enough, there's debris there. So what you can do is you can either, you can run your file back a few times and shape a little bit more. Let's take another look at kind of where there's some debris and that debris may have come from just inadequate shaping or it may have come from debris falling when you were irrigating. So tip number one is go ahead and just run your file back to your working length and see if that works. Tip number two actually might be something that you don't even know is going on. So this is a gutta gauge and what you can use it for is to cut your gutta percha to its very specific tip size. So it turns out that gutta percha is plus or minus 10% big or small and that's, that's on a good day. So your gutta percha might actually be way larger than you think it is, meaning it's shorter. It's not going to go all the way to your working length. So say for example, this is a 3506 cone, a medium from Wave 1 Gold. Let's go ahead and place it in the 35 slot. And I'm, I checked a whole bunch of these and they actually don't go all the way to the other side. If you put it in the 40 side of the 40 size hole, it goes through. So I'm kind of thinking that it's like a, maybe like a 37, actually I'm just cutting, I'm cutting a gutta percha here, just showing you if you can take a 20, cut it to a 35 and now I have a 3507 piece of gutta percha. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and place our, it does, so back to our 3506 does not go all the way through. Our 40, it goes through on the 40 side. So maybe this is like a 3706 kind of size. Now, does that make a significant difference? Probably not in the long run, but it's something you may want to consider when you're routinely short and you're wondering what the heck is going on. You can get a gutta gauge and just kind of figure out where, what size your gutta percha is. Hey, Asher, and I wanted to take a second of your time just to introduce our course, Root Canal like an Endodontist. We've had it for a couple years and we've had some amazing successes through it. Just confidence building on behalf of our students. And really what happened was a few years ago, I wanted to create a course to help others because I know what it's like on your endo journey. A lot of times you don't know what's going on you don't know if you've ledged it, you don't know what to do if you blocked it, you don't even know if a curved canal, what to do. And what I wanted to do was take all my mistakes and my training from my residency and put it into a affordable online course for everyone around the world to join in. And it's been absolutely amazing. And I wanted to offer to you, check us out at allthingsendo.ca. Once you join the course, you get access into our private Facebook group where all of us answer questions. And I'm telling you, there are questions every day that you might be able to, I'm sure you'll be able to connect with because sometimes it's just takes a little bit of courage to ask a question and then your outcome may be incredible. Anyways, I look forward to seeing you there. All things endo.ca. We'll talk to you soon. Tip number three, do your canals meet? Are they confluent? One quick way to figure that out is to place your cone in one canal. This is the canal, the cone is in MB2, and I'm just placing a 15 file in MB1 all the way to length. You can do it the opposite way. And we're going to take a look, we'll place our polar gutta percha out, and we'll take a look under high magnification to see if that 15 file has slid past, pierced, or done something to the end of that gutta percha, gutta percha, piece of gutta percha. Now you need high magnification, and we'll, we're gonna rotate around. Sometimes you need a specific angle and light and sure enough there it is that's where the 15 file goes by now this is funny because one of my new dentists asked me you know like can you give me a hand my canal one of my canals looks short we did this exact same thing and sure enough boom he wasn't short he was actually right on the money and all you need to do is operate the you know in this case we'll operate mb1 
and then we can place a cone to length at MB2 knowing it's going to be short. Now we can get into other details about how to measure it and blah, blah, blah. You can also do the aspiration test. We're going to show it here. It's not 100%. I've been burned by this before in terms of determining if it's confluent, but sometimes you can see the irrigant was pulled up. You watch it here. So I'll suction the irrigant back from MB1 and you'll see it come up, go down MB2. Now, sometimes if they join, if the canals do not join, they might be an isthmus joining them, but their apices are separate. Now, I use that at the end just to kind of do a funny little like, hey, feel good, but don't rely on that because I've been burned. Tip number four has to do with irrigating. Now, what I've seen with students and newer dentists is that, and I get it, irrigating is so boring and you don't know how much you need to do. Let me offer you this tip. Sodium epichloride is super critical. You know, there's always a problem of having a potential sodium epichloride accident. So I'm fearful of taking my irrigating needle. It's a side vented 30 gauge, anywhere sh closer than two millimeters to my working length. But my EDTA needle, what I'll do is I'll bend that right to my working length. And if I can get it down to that length and flush out all of that debris out of there. So using your EDTA needle, you can not only are you removing your organic smear layer, but you can also use it as sort of like a flush if you can think of it. You know, you're flushing a toilet. Well, not quite like that, but use that as your irrigant to get even closer to your working length. Well, that sums up our four tips for today. Let me know if it was helpful. I'm truly grateful you're here. Love to you all. We'll talk to you soon.